In this video, I'm gonna cover the whole entire market in terms of S&P 500, Dow Jones, NASDAQ, and then as well as the 10-year treasury, economic calendar, the VIX, plus what the Fed stated. Um, if you do find this video beneficial, consider dropping a like, it does help with the channel. So thank you so much for that, appreciate it. And I do post these videos daily, so I highly encourage you to check out the latest video on X or YouTube, so that way you get the most up-to-date information. Now in terms of what the Fed stated uh, today, basically for the most part, rates are unchanged, and that they wanted to get to that 2% inflation target, and by the time, oh, for the most part, because they were kind of questioning on, okay, once you get to that, would then is it too late or not too late, so on and so forth. But basically, they're assessing the data as it comes in and then making a decision for the rate cut. And they left the table open for one rate cut for this year as well. Now, for the 10 year treasury, or not 10 year treasury, economic calendar, before I get into the resistance and support levels and the price points of how the market will move potentially, uh, we have Thursday, June 13th, 8 30 a.m., initial jobless claims, producer price index, PPI year over year core PPI and core PPI year over year. So inflation numbers tomorrow morning at 8.30 a.m. with initial jobless claims tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. as well. 10-year treasury is at 4.31%. We can see a little bit dropping, which is kind of uh, strange because the 10-year treasury dropping indicates that the market should be, some not should be, but could be going up. Plus the VIX as well is low and indicating further drop too as well. So when the VIX goes lower, the market tends to go up, kind of going alongside with the 10-year treasury uh, for the way it is right now. Um, but at the same time, when I look at the charts, the charts are showing downside, not upside. So I'm going to go over that soon. But you can see the VIX right about here. One month chart showing it's in the bearish movement, MAC line, and it still looks like it's going lower. The three month chart, bearish movement, still going lower. And then the six month chart, bearish movement, still going lower. And these indications are not always accurate, accurate. But if that's the case and the VIX is going lower with the 10 year treasury going lower as well, you would assume the market's going to go up. But if we look at the SPY ETF for S&P 500, uh, you could look at the one month chart plus by the way one thing to note one month three months six months those are more short term so that's why i'm covering them for the most part but if you look at the one month chart right about here for spy etf for s p 500 showing bearish movement downside for the macd three month if you were thinking the one month was going to cross over soon or like arch up well the three month pretty much reaffirms that downside is coming hypothetically so three month crossed over to the bearish movement going to the downside can they reverse obviously they could reverse one thing I'm thinking what could happen is when the PPI slash inflation numbers come out, maybe in the morning we dip down a little bit lower and then go back up and climb up to the uh, all time high levels and so on and so forth, because the market seems to be resilient uh, nonetheless for the time being. Uh, but yeah, so for the six month chart, this is where I, I'm getting the idea of potentially it's going up too, by the way, not even just the fact that the market's resilient is if you look at the six month chart, it's not necessarily arching down fully. It's leaving the door open to upside. So. The one month, three month is obviously more shorter term than six months. So maybe again, market opens with inflation data, maybe a little bit higher than expected somewhat potentially. Uh, market dips a little bit down for whatever reason. And then towards the end of the day, maybe starts climbing with the combination of six month, plus the fact that the VIX is low and 10 year treasury is uh, going lower as well. Now, in terms of the upper limits and lower limits, before I get into the QQQ, which is ETF for NASDAQ and then Dow Jones, uh, if First of all, is a horizontal resistance level that acted as support as well. So pretty much horizontal resistance, support, support. And this level, if we were to drop down, I don't think it will be right away. But let me, I'll cover the lower levels first and then cover the top level. So the first lower level that we could fall on, we close at $541.36. We could close at $540, give or take. And then the next level is $537. But I'm more interested in this area because if you kind of somewhat draw an upward trend support level, plus with this moving average, there was a channel that I saw between 534 to 536. And you can see a bunch of consolidation around this price point. So 534, 536 potentially. Will we go lower than that? I don't know, because again, the six month chart is kind of indicating more upside, but if we do, then we could find support at the 531 in some change, but ultimately around this area, which is about 529 to 531 price point um, support level. So the moving average is showing 530, but I know the 529, we end up hitting and hitting the 529 in some change at some points, but essentially 529 to 531, we'll see support. Again, consolidation, support, support. And if you think it's gonna get worse, which I don't think so, but 528, and some change uh, in terms of support level. Now, if it goes lower, I'll keep you guys posted on X and YouTube in terms of community posts. Okay, so now to the upside. Again, we have an all-time high at 544, so we're gonna have to pass that. But then I checked with uh, this upward trend resistance line. Towards the end of the closing day, if we were to trickle up to it, it'd be $548 and some change, give or take. Uh, but again, that is if we're going alongside this upward trend resistance line. Okay, so now looking at QQQ, if we look at the one month chart, it's the same thing as S&P 500, downside MAC line showing bearish movement to downside. The three month chart is not necessarily on the bearish movement yet, 
but it looks like it is going to be arching down to the downside. But then the six months chart is way stronger than the S&P 500, showing potentially no slowdown. So where I think the tech sector is just going to carry the markets tomorrow, potentially, um, if it doesn't end up dipping down lower. Now, if we if you want to see what I'm looking at, this is dates back since 2010 with the upward trend resistance line. Yeah, we passed it in 2020 to 2022, but got back underneath it and tried to pass it, couldn't. And then this time around, it's a clean pass, basically. It actually is because it was meeting resistance. And this is the line since 2010, by the way, and then just spikes up. Um, so major jump, major jump just on time and it broke through. Now, the question is, is it going to be a false breakout? We can come back down. It's hard to tell exactly. We have to see the markets in the next, I would say, the next two trading days. Um, and then we'll be able to assess it for sure. But if you believe that this upward trend resistance line that I kind of drew, drew is somewhat relevant in terms of the play, then right now we're at $474.15 and the limit would be roughly about $480, give or take. So uh, we can get there pretty much by tomorrow's trading day and then probably by Monday, or not Monday, um, by Friday drop down potentially if it's a false breakout, but we'll see. But uh, first, in terms of support levels, well, actually that's the resistance levels. So It'll be between 474, it looks like 476, 477 could be resistance too, but ultimately 470, $480. But in terms of support, if we drop down, we're looking at support at 473. And essentially coming back down to the $468 price point with this upward trend resistance line potentially acting as support. And then the moving average is looking at 476 and 464. 464 could hold us because we could see pretty much a good amount of cons consolidation. Plus with the moving average, again, 464 pretty sure that would hold us. And then I've shown in the past this upward trend resistance line dating back since November of 2023, which is resistance, support, 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 resistance, support, and so on and so forth. If you think it's just gonna keep dropping like crazy, we have support at 461, obviously 460 is gonna be support, but then this moving average plus this upward trend resistance line slash support line is gonna be around roughly about $458, give or take, 458, 459. So there's that. Now, in terms of the Dow Jones, if we look at it, this is a little bit where it's different. So the one month chart showing strong downside, three month chart showing strong downside as well. And then the six month chart showing strong downside. So the Dow Jones is the only one that's essentially not showing any upside uh, and it could just trickle down. Now, right now we're at 38,712 points. And if we trickle down, there is support at the 38,400 price point, give or take. And then if you think this upward trend support level that's been dating back since April of 2024 holds true still, then if you were thinking it's going to drop like crazy, about 30,121 points, give or take. Now to the upside, we've had a bunch of resistance a bunch of times at the 39,150 points, give or take. You can see two times right about here horizontally, a couple times here too as well. But with the moving average to colliding, again, 39,150 could hold true. And in terms of... Um, uh, the support, again, just to mention one more time, about 38,413 points, give or take. We're at 38,712 right now. That's basically it for today's video. Thanks again for watching. I do appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.